In this video, let's try to implement pre-filter and post-filter annotations to achieve method level security inside our application. For the same, if you can remember, we have a contact us page inside our application where anyone can go ahead without logging in and submit their contact request details to the EasyBank staff. So this is the controller where we have written previously. As you can see, there is a method save contact enquiry details, which will eventually save the details to the database and will return a service request number to the UI. Here, I just wanted to apply pre-filtering conditions. Again, this is nothing to do with the authorization because this is an open page. I just wanted to show you these annotations like pre-authorized, pre-filter, post-authorized, post-filter, all these kind of annotations you don't have to tie up with only authorization, authentication, but you can tie to the any other requirements that you have. So here you can see if someone send me a request from the UI or if there is no page at all inside my application, if someone is invoking my API through the backend non-web applications, in such scenarios, I wanted to have a check using pre-filter where if a user entered contact name as test, that means someone is trying to do testing on my application, which I don't want to, to save the details into my database. So for the same, I have made this configuration changes like using pre-filter. This filter object is this the object that my code will refer and inside this contact object we have a contact name. If someone sent a value which is equal to test then this method will not be invoked and eventually an exception will be thrown to the UI application or any backend API that is invoking this method. So now we made the changes. Let's try to restart our application. I came to the UI. Here we can go to the contact us page and we don't need any login credentials for that. I'm entering value as test in the name. This is the value that we are testing in the backend and email. I'll enter something test at the rate email.com subject will be hello message will be this is a test message. So now I'm clicking send message. I should not get successful message from the backend. As you can see on clicking send message, nothing is happening and you can check in the console. I'm getting 500 error because this is not an authorized space. That's the reason we are not getting 403. Instead, we are getting 500 error. If this is an API which is authorized users only can access, then in that scenario, we should have got 403 error. So this way, we can stop the execution of a method based upon the parameters that we are using by leveraging pre-filter annotation. Now let's try to implement post filter annotation also. I'll just replace this pre with post because I have a requirement where I should accept anything that coming from the front end or someone is calling my API and I should save all those details inside my database. But if someone sends a contact name with the test, I should not send any service request number details to them because I know they are just testing. I don't want to give a service request number to them. So in such scenarios, we can use post filter, which means our method business logic will be executed, but user will not get the return details that my method is giving back to them. So in order to test that, let's try to restart this application and I'm keeping a breakpoint here. And I can also show you that the contact details will be eventually saved to the database. And though an exception coming from the post filter annotation, the records that saved into the database will not be rolled back as we discussed previously. So you can see here now we have two contact details. Now I'll go to the UI, going to the contact us page, entering the same details test and entering test at the right email. Subject is hello. Body is this is a sample test message. I'm clicking send and a breakpoint will stop here. That means the framework is not stopping the method invocation. It will let the details saved into the database, but you will not get any response with the reason 500, which was thrown by the backend due to the configurations that we made. 
let's try to go and see in the back end whether our message is saved or not i'm re-executing the query as you can see here my method is saved into the database even though there is an 500 exception came the record has not been rolled back because spring framework will treat these exceptions as a security related exceptions only that's why it will never roll back the transactions that happen inside that method so due to this reason please be very careful while using post filter and pre filter will always give an assurance that your business logic will never get executed if the authorization rules or any other rules that you configured are not met i hope this makes sense to you and how we can apply filtering authorization on top of your methods inside any layer of your web application or non web application compared to a traditional way of implementing to web paths or mvc paths with this we'll close this section by discussing summary of what we discussed in this section in the next video thank you and bye